everyone, and good Tuesday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here, and it's weather for weather geeks on the eve of what promises to be a pretty active 24-hour period, especially kind of a six-hour period in the middle of the night tomorrow night. That's what we're going to be mostly focused on in this video, but we'll talk about the winter weather threats coming up over the weekend and even into next week as well. In the meantime, now that we're uh, at uh, February the 4th, we can really officially say now we're at the beginning of solar spring. We're about 45 days from the equinox coming up in the middle of March, and we're about 45 days past the solstice, the beginning of the uh, astronomical winter season back on December 21st. So solar spring is here, and this is the three months of the year in which we gain daylight at the fastest rate, we're getting about 2 minutes and 20 seconds per day right now. And uh, we'll peak at about uh, two and a half minutes of a daylight gain per day coming up in March as we get closer to that equinox. Just a signpost of the changing seasons. You know, it's hard to believe in early February. It's hard to wrap your brain around the fact that, you know, we're not in the dead, dead of winter anymore. You know, we've got plenty of winter left in the tank, I think, and several opportunities for some winter weather coming up in the next couple of weeks. But coming up in uh, just uh, 14 days, two weeks from today, in fact, uh, our sunset will reach 6 p.m., sunrise 7 a.m., and then earlier for a little while, starting February 26th. Now, those earlier sunrises will be briefly interrupted by springing ahead at the beginning of uh, daylight saving time on March the 9th. But, of course, we're gaining daylight so fast at that time of the year that uh, those uh, later sunrises won't be around for very long and our sunsets coming up in just a little more than a month we'll be back in the seven o'clock hour we really uh, see a big change when we do that time change in early march in the meantime we have a winter weather system heading our way as we go into wednesday night and today the national weather service office in pittsburgh did hoist winter weather advisories for just about all of their coverage area with just the exception of a couple of counties it's actually an ice storm warning out towards Clearfield, PA, and down the spine of the Appalachians, the Laurel Highlands, south and east of Pittsburgh. That's where ice accretion amounts will be the highest. And so this is going to be a big deal for anyone traveling tomorrow night and early Thursday morning and even through mid-morning along Interstate 80. If you're heading east of I-79, especially Thursday morning, over towards Franklin, Oil City, Dubois, Clearfield, Clarion, all those uh, you know towns and cities near I-80 in Pennsylvania can be impacted in the PA Turnpike down here, closer to Johnstown, and then uh, heading across towards Breezewood, PA. Um, that's going to be uh, an area that's more heavily impacted by the freezing rain. Now, it's interesting, the Cleveland Weather Service office has not hoisted any winter weather advisories yet. They will at some point, I'm sure. I was a little surprised they didn't do it this afternoon, but just because Mahoning and Trumbull are not under a winter weather advisory, don't read too much into that. Of course, the forecast is just about the same. It's just those counties are covered by the Cleveland National Weather Service office. So the odds of a tenth of an inch or more worth of ice accretion highest to our east a couple of hours to our east. Also a little higher off to our west, the I-71 corridor from Mansfield down towards the northern suburbs of Columbus and especially west of there closer to Sandusky and Toledo. Uh, you've got pretty strong odds of seeing at least a tenth of an inch and perhaps even a couple of tenths of an inch worth of ice accretion out there. In our TV viewing area we put the odds you know roughly half and half, 40, 50 percent chance that you exceed a tenth of an inch of ice accretion. Our computer models are in pretty good agreement. You, you remember yesterday the European model was way, way up here. It was an outlier, and sure enough, it's come to its senses today. So I think, you know, it's going to be pretty common for a lot of our viewing area to be somewhere in here about a tenth of an inch worth of ice accretion. What does that mean for us? Everybody kind of knows what a couple of inches of snow looks like, right? Well, what does a tenth of an inch of ice mean as far as impacts go? That's when most surfaces get a glaze. You're going to be scraping your windshield. Uh, Elevated surfaces, especially if they haven't been treated, can certainly be quite slippery, bridges, things like that. But even surfaces that aren't elevated can get a glaze of ice. Now, this isn't a crippling amount of ice. This isn't going to cause a lot of power outages and that sort of thing. We really start to see, you know, bigger impacts once we get up to a quarter of an inch, usually, of ice accretion. But a tenth of an inch, that can be problematic, certainly, for night owls and early morning risers Thursday morning. So just a little reminder, a little refresher on the difference between sleet and freezing rain. Well, freezing rain is just rain that freezes on contact with the ground. It stays rain all the way down from the cloud, all the way down to the ground. The air above our heads is above 32. It's just right down here where we are, where it's below 32. Sleet's a little bit different because that warmer air aloft, or that warmer layer aloft, I should say, is thinner. So the, the falling precipitation has time to refreeze in the deeper layer of cold air 
but it doesn't refreeze into a snowflake. It refreezes into little ice pellets. That's what sleet is, little ice pellets. They bounce around, and sleet can actually accumulate. Freezing rain doesn't accumulate, it accretes or adheres to surfaces. And of course, usually we see snow, of course, when the, uh, uh, the layer of air from the ground on up to the cloud is below the freezing mark. So this is going to be something that, you know, you have to take into account if you're going to be out and about early Thursday. Again, the timing of this, the daylight hours tomorrow, mostly okay. It's, you know, during the afternoon, we still can't rule out a thin little band of light snow trying to get going. It's going to be a skinny thing, and it might not even happen. But if it does, could someone see a little, you know, dusting or something like that? Yes, but boy, the confidence on, confidence on that idea is is still low at this point. Much higher confidence in the timing and the impacts of our freezing rain. I think this is mostly after midnight. So by midnight, the freezing rain's probably about to Columbus, Zanesville, Cambridge, up towards Toledo. That puts it on track to overspread our area, probably one, two, three o'clock in the morning, Thursday morning. Most of us are going to sleep through this, but anybody who does have to be out and about Thursday morning, uh, you know, say 5 a.m., 6 a.m., if your shift starts at 6 or 7 a.m., uh, you're going to be running into some, some slick surfaces. Temperatures by daybreak, by about 7 o'clock or so, should be trying to rise above freezing in most of our area. Now, there may be some exceptions still. Once the sun is up, it still may be a little below freezing. Once you're out towards the I-79 corridor and points east along I-80, and again, southern PA, the uh, PA Turnpike, will be problematic for a time, even into the daylight hours on Thursday. But for our, most of our TV viewing area, we're pretty much out of the woods pretty quickly once the sun comes up Thursday morning, because not only will the rain shut off, but temperatures will rise quickly. We'll have no trouble getting up into the 40s Thursday afternoon. Cold front rolls through, though, and a brisk and colder day Friday. We're back to kind of vanilla early February weather on Friday with a brisk wind, maybe a stray flurry, and temperatures not much better than the freezing mark. All right, so we've got uh, two more systems that we're keeping a close eye on in the coming days, and let's, uh, let's actually go over here to my browser and uh, yeah, let's click on this so we can view this a little bit easier. Um, this is the uh, latest run of the European model for the upcoming weekend, specifically Saturday into Saturday night. We're dry to start Saturday. Precipitation probably tries to fill in by early to mid afternoon on Saturday. So after say one or two o'clock. Um, and when it comes in, this can be a little bit more of a potpourri than we're going to get tomorrow night. I think it's pretty much just freezing rain, ending as rain tomorrow night. When this comes in on Saturday, we could have some freezing rain. We could have some sleet pellets. There can be some wet snowflakes. And eventually, this is going to change to just plain rain as we rise above freezing. But the process of rising above freezing may take until 7 or 8 or so in the evening. So that window of mid-afternoon to early evening. That's our window on Saturday in which we can see a variety of precipitation types and some slick travel could certainly result. And there's that change over to plain rain as we go into the evening. And then the precipitation will just end as we go towards midnight and beyond Saturday night into Sunday morning. So again, our trouble spot Saturday is mostly mid to late afternoon, very early in the evening. Then we'll keep an eye on next week. This is uh, you know still a week or eight days away. So we're gonna rely on ensemble modeling here. This is this afternoon's run of the European Ensemble showing uh, not precipitation type. We can't show the type of precipitation graphically here, but the amount of precipitation is shown. And as I roll this forward, this is next Monday and then next Tuesday into Tuesday night. Now, it appears that the highest chance of significant precipitation may be more in a corridor like this. Pittsburgh south and east may be especially favored. You know, it's going to be rain once you're far enough to the south, but this could be a pretty good snow event, you know, from the southern Appalachians through the central Appalachians and up into New England. We may be more in the grazing category, but, you know, this is still eight days away, seven and a half, eight days away. So don't read too much into just one set of modeling like I just showed you. But there is a chance, anyway, of some wintry intrigue towards the middle of next week, and that one probably has a better chance of being a all an all-snow event as opposed to this you know, freezing rain and mixed precipitation stuff that we're going to be dealing with on two occasions over the coming days. So stay updated on the latest forecasts on all my social media, the Storm Tracker 21 app, and I will see you back here on Wednesday for weather for weather geeks.